All right. Okay, shortly after the spectacular result we've had at the East Grand Prix today, I've got Nick Griffin and Mark Collins with me. We're in a good mood, actually. Enough. Nick, how do you feel? Absolutely brilliant. Um, obviously, you know, personally, just getting off. Um, so I'm happy to have you, but uh, that's important. But on a different level, what we've achieved politically, I think it's going to be fantastic. It's going to take a long time for this to sink in. Uh, but you know, straight out after there, there were 10, 11 cameras there. It's wall to wall on the views. Uh, we've been in all the radio stations, done interviews with the uh, you know, big hitting names on the, on the radio programmes uh, already. Uh, I'm sure we'll have more. Uh, the image is us coming out, so the Front National champagne bottles going. Or all the rest of it. They'll get something of, you know, um, skinhead club security swinging champagne. They'll do something like that. Heavens above all that. But well, even that uh, just shows who you are. This is the real English, the real British people. Uh, we won. We all won. That's great. I, I, was, I was in the court and the emotion in that court when you faced through those six charges and the jury said, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty all the time. How did you feel, Mark? Because you've gone through it really, haven't you? Well, I was totally elated. It's probably one of the best days of my life. I mean, I, 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 I don't think any amount of money in the world could buy the same emotion and sense of feeling and, and wonderful, wonderful sense of elation that myself and Nick have got today. It's been absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Well, I think on behalf of everybody in the British National Party, the way you two have stood up to it, I mean, you haven't flinched at all for all of this. You've gone through it with dignity and a lot of courage. I think on behalf of the party, I just thank you to you for the way you've gone through it. Not everybody could have done that. Not everybody could have done that. But to the serious side of things, today we've inflicted what I would consider a mortal blow to multiculturalism. It's the final nail in the coffin of multiculturalism. I think so, because before they could pretend even the people who weren't very keen on it, they can pretend, well, they have one set of views, and we're a tiny little group with another set of views, and the public are obviously on their side. And when you put together, actually, the, the jury last time, don't forget them, it was down to 11 people, it's the old lady on it, so, was in, so she was off. The jury last time, back in January, was down to 11 people. And um, what, eight, nine of them wanted to let us off. They, they let us off. One jury cleared us apart from each other. I couldn't agree on the others because three of them wouldn't let us off. This time it's 12 out of 12. So you put that together, you're actually talking 20 out of 23. Ordinary, randomly chosen people in West Yorkshire looked at what they actually had to say about us not guilty. And this lot took only a couple of hours, in fact, to be guilty. Most of the time they're adults, so um, was taken up by them wanting to see the speeches again. And I think that was crucial. But when, certainly I felt, when they looking at those speeches again, in the light and, and viewing them in the light of what a jury would think, in the light of what they've been told, what the defence was, how uh, it was explained, you've got to take the whole thing, look at what they're trying to do, saying we know there's really terrible problems in this area, particularly Keithley with the grooming issue, but what you've got to do is organise politically and do something about it. That's the thing the jury looked at uh, and thought, well, uh, Raman down at the old bay was found guilty of the side of the race hatred, holding up placards, you know, kill those who are not so this. The jury have made the distinction that there you've got vile words it's directed to create hatred, and in our cases, you had stern words directed to motivating political action to have a democratic solution to genuine problems. And the jury looked at that, they've been able to distinguish it. Uh, it's fantastic. It is, it is. Mark, you've scored some fairly heavy political points against the BBC. I mean, your interview's been carried quite extensively. Fair play to the BBC, they've covered it as well. In my opinion, I don't think the BBC's role in this, colluding with the Labour Party to try and jail a political opponent of them. I don't think the BBC, as an impartial organisation, ever lived this down. How do you feel? Well, I think the BBC have already admitted, they admitted the other morning on Breakfast TV, that they're institutionally politically correct. And that's a, that's a huge admission from them, because it basically states that they can never give fair and decent coverage to parties like the MP. And that's been shown with this documentary the secret agents. That documentary wasn't meant to be an impartial look at the BMC. 
program, one which can be taken either way, you know, the goods and the bads, because there's goods and bads in every party. That was a clear, cherry pick demonisation of what they felt would be the worst part of the British National Party. And the way they took our speeches, they took the parts they felt would be the worst, the most inflammatory, cherry picked and showed them to an audience of four and a half million people. And because there was no violence, there was no disorder, that shows there wasn't even the hint that those speeches could be likely to stir up or incite anyone to do anything other than legitimate political activity. Back on TV. There you go. Look at that. There we are again. These images. These images going out to the whole country. All signs, really important. These are going out to our troops in Afghanistan and Iraq and elsewhere as well, actually all over the world. And I know that's not that many people, but there are best young men and women as well, some of them. And I think that's that's really important. And um, Mark, in particular, in his speech, made reference to them. Uh, that will sink home with. Uh, a lot of good lads that um, are risking their lives in wars, they've got nothing to do with us. And they're still doing it damn well. And uh, that's going to go around all over the world. Look at, look at that. Look at that crowd. And that's normal, out. normal, decent British people celebrating the right that the jury, those 12 good men and women, have given to the British people, to their right of freedom of speech. Yeah. I think a lot of people will be laughing about the comment where I called the BBC cockroaches. Oh, sure. But the, uh, the important message in there was that when two men can be taken before the court with all the proper evidence for telling the truth, and Tony Blair, as I said in my speech to the crowd, had no evidence whatsoever to take us to war and has cost the British people hundreds of decent British lives, and he's not in court. That shows the true injustice. I think this, uh, this case should never have been brought. It must have cost millions of pounds. I mean, the BBC must have spent tens of thousands. You'd have thought, in a sensible, first-rate country, a free country, the most sensible thing would have been to get the studio, have a debate with Labour politicians, liberal intellectuals and Muslim scholars, and sit you two in there, and then discuss it. That would have been a long time that we know the answer to why, because they never lost second guess. But I mean, the elation, I feel like it's not like the elation in that do you think that you possibly try anything else? There's no chance of a retrial or anything. No, that's, that, that, that's finished. Um, one, of my, one of the lawyers said to us afterwards, yeah, they will be after you. Again, be very careful. And, um, so we're always careful, that's why we're free. But um, certainly we've learned from this. Uh, uh, we're going to be doing, putting together a, a training DVD for organisers for speakers. Uh, and we'll use the two some three speeches which we had and point out the things which were said and what were really not said. So they were saying, for instance, that when you said that Asians are carrying out these crimes, you haven't said all Asians, have you? So you're trying to stir people up. Now our defence was just to say, well, that's a nonsense because a local newspaper or the, the Times or the BBC occasionally say, you know, three Asian men were wanted for this crime, three Asian men were convicted for this crime, and none of them have to say, of course, not all Asians commit gang rape, so why should we? But that's what the prosecution are trying to do. Now, the simple thing to shut me down even that avenue uh, is that in each speech, I think we've got to start, we've got to say, of course, when we're talking about these crimes by whichever community it is, we're not saying they all do it. It only takes 30 seconds to say that, and it's in the speech, and it shuts down the whole area. So we're going to produce this training uh, and um, they won't even be able to try that in, uh, in, in the future. But nevertheless, they'll be looking and they'll, they'll try again. I think the, the Labour Party especially, they will now see the clock's ticking as regards their, what's left of their mass support and it's switching on block to us. And they're going to try very, very hard indeed uh, to cause trouble for this party uh, as wear us down, get us out of the way while they're still just about time left. Because time's almost up for those people. It is. I mean, on the news, I don't know whether you've heard the board stage resigned from the Labour Party today. No. From the party. From the party, yes. He's actually stepped down from the government to concentrate, he says, on his charity. It has nothing to do, he said, with the scandal of cash for honours or anything like that. But on the very same day that you two from the Instagram board of board stage will leave the Labour government. So maybe there's no other coincidence there, but I'm pressing that there is. You may be trying to get the bad news. Yeah.
out under the cover of a big story. This is a this is a big story. Yeah, that amount of it. All in all, sum up. We've had worse days in the BFP. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, mate. I've got to say, by the way, this is the man who was going to have to take over if I was inside, and that's why he's so damn relieved. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers.